Nico and Vince doing Am I Wrong? Seriously, am I? Right here on Dan Radio Style. Five fallacies about God and life. I Hopefully, for those that aren't interested in this uh, topic, uh, maybe this the title itself is enough to put you off, but it's actually kind of a, for me, was a very freeing concept when I finally came to terms with this. And this is probably years ago, because it's something that Neil Donald Walsh talks about, and it's from, I think, books he did back uh, back when I was younger. Um, but this was in a, a more recent book he'd done that I'd read it. But in the very back, he had some very cool little quick outline synopsises that I'm going to basically read from. And so there's five fallacies that we typically hold about God. And I think this probably covers across a few different religious barriers. I can't say all of them because I don't know enough about all of them. But I know some about some, right? So we'll see how it goes. But um, for those of us that are kind of more on the spiritual path, and certainly I was brought up extremely religious, and I have a very, very good relationship with Source. I use a different name because I think the the names can be a little uh, segregational in their own ways. I think sometimes just by using a specific name for your deity, then all of a sudden you've now separated yourself from everyone else. But really, it's still a kind of a similar thing, right? Slightly different stories, but they tend to fit well for cultures. And then we also have some major fallacies about life. Now, these... I think are super helpful uh, when it comes to us dealing with each other. A lot of people have asked me questions about higher selves. Can they hear me? Are they able to block me? All these kinds of things. And from a higher self standpoint, a lot of these things don't exist. We have a lot of fallacies that we think exist um, above us. And it's a lot of it's based off of how petty we can be as people. Our higher selves are really above that pettiness, that ego, that that sort of part of ourselves that's very quick to go, "Uh uh-uh, you did it. Like that, that's higher self's not like that. It's not even close to like that. So we'll cover those fallacies as well. So again, this is coming off of Conversations with God. This is book four, Awaken the Species, something that I'm very fond of, awakening. Um, But nonetheless, so here are the uh, five fallacies about God. I'm not going to try to beat these into the ground, but I think they are worthy of bringing up. Number one, people believe that God needs something. He doesn't. He's got it all. He, she, it, we, whatever. I'm going to use he just because it's easier. But there's nothing that God needs. God's got everything he wants. God and us are, we're, we're like, he's everything, right? We're all a part of it. He's everything. So it's, it's beyond this need. There's a a very religious aspect that's kind of created these fallacies. So kind of understand that's where some of these have come from and they are a means of control. Um, Maybe that was really useful at one time in society. I think we've evolved further than that, I hope or at least we're evolving, uh, whether we like it or not. So uh, I think the getting rid of some of these fallacies that he somehow needs, he's everything, he can create whatever he wants. See, there's no, right? Why would there be a need? People believe that it's possible for God to not get what he needs, right? Like, he's God. I mean, really, truly, if this is the omnipotent ultimate source of all that is, if he wants something, snap his fingers, poof, there it is in his hands. I mean, there's been masters that have demonstrated manifesting instantly on this planet. Few, but certainly some have, and it's quite impressive from what I've understood. So again, he doesn't need anything, and if he did, he'd get it, right? It's that simple. People believe God has separated himself from them because they have failed to give him what he needs. A lot of us feel like there's this we're not worthy kind of concept built into it. And when you're not worthy to the ultimate source, to the ultimate creator, that tends to put you in a very disempowered state. And that's certainly a fallacy as well. God wishes, source wishes all of us to succeed, but more importantly, has put us in this place or we've chosen to be in this place where we get to experience lack, limitation, like it's whatever we want. We're in the playpen. If we want to play with the thing that we keep stepping on the rake and it hurts us, but we keep playing with it, well, all right, you're going to keep playing with it. You're going to keep stepping on it, whatever. You'll learn. It's cool. That's what it's here for. So there's no, you have to do this certain thing or else he's not going to give you things. No, based off of what's going on, we've got a serious like I'm not worthy kind of complex and you're probably experiencing I'm not worthy kind of situations in your life. Like I've talked about on other shows, what we're putting out is what we're attracting. What we are on the inside is what happens to us on the outside. 
So number four here, people believe that God needs something so much, he requires them to give it to him from their separated position, meaning God lacks something. He again needs something so badly, he lacks this thing and thusly is going to take it from you or you must give it to him or else. And again, a very controlling kind of aspect. Why would a a being, a magnificent being, create you only so that you would worship him? I mean, that seems crazy, right? And especially when we throw in there that he is love. Like, oh, everyone's like, he's the most amazing love ever, but don't cross him. He is the lovingest of love that ever loved before, but don't do anything mean to him. Oh my God, he loves like nobody's ever loved before, unless you hurt his feelings. But other than that, he's the greatest God ever. No. That's a human trait. That's crazy us. We're like that. God loves us. That's a, that's a crazy fallacy that's been created because, well, frankly, you're a lot easier to control if I can say right off the bat, you're a sinner and you've got problems and you better listen to us because we're going to help you get to the, to the finish line. Ah, that's pretty cruel if that's really the type of God that's out there. And frankly, the relationship I've had with Source my whole life Mm, much nicer, wonderful, warm, glowing kind of when I make mistakes. He's like, ah, see, you're learning, right? This is cool. And that's it. So it's much, much better that way. All right, number five, people believe that God will destroy them if they don't give him what he needs. Again, this whole fallacy around the fact that he's somehow incapable of getting his own manifestation going right? I'm able to manifest green lights. I'm pretty sure God can manifest a planet, right? If he wants, right? So again, really, are we putting these sort of limitations or misunderstandings or fallacies that have been taught to us through the years? Are we letting these things kind of shape how we live our lives, what we do in our lives, and what we believe is capable in our lives? Now, the ones that I think are super important, the fallacies about life, right? The five fallacies about life. We covered the God ones. Here's five fallacies about life. People are separate from each other. That's not true. We are connected. Higher selves constantly talking. You're going to bed. Your souls are getting together. They're having little parties. They're hanging out. They're like, all right, tomorrow we're going to hook up. I'm going to text you out of the blue. You're like, oh my God, it's going to be really fun. We'll totally do it. We are completely, totally, 100% connected at all times. There's no ignoring and there's no reason why we would want to ignore each other. Consciously, yes. Consciously, we're little babies. Higher selves, no. Higher selves are like the adults in the room that are like, really? All right, they're going to fight over the crayon. Let's break it in two and let them both have at it, right? I mean, you know, whatever. So fallacy of life. We're not separate. There is not enough of what people need to be happy. We have this limitation mindset that's placed in a lot of us. Now, I will say just right off the bat, because a couple of these people will be like, well, what about trees? We don't have enough trees to keep cutting them down. Yes, I agree with that 100%. But that doesn't mean that things can't be made, manufactured. There is some technologies that have been played. There's other aspects of what could replace wood, for example, that's maybe natural or good. Or, you know, there's there's better ways to think of things. So I think it's possible. And things such as hemp and bamboo and other things, there's a lot of things that grow like acres acres a year and stuff, too, that you could replace some of these technologies with that we don't currently do either. So again, there's ways to create more of a renewable green kind of scenario, but there's enough of stuff to keep us happy. And crazy, if you're constantly looking for something else outside of yourself to make you happy, you'll probably find that your happiness wanes frequently or you're never really happy to begin with at all because you're looking for happiness outside of yourself when really the happiness starts inside. Just being content with the way things are, the way you are, the way your life is. Again, it all starts from the inside. People think they must compay, uh, compete for what they think there is not enough of. So if there's not enough of something, I obviously need to fight you for it. I need to take you for it. I need to attack your country so I can have the resources that you've got that I need that you want to sell me, but I don't really want to pay for, right? Or I'm going to break into your house and steal what it is that I want because you know I need it more than you or I need it badly or I don't, I don't want to get it another way, right? So again, there's this whole concept of there's not enough of stuff So I either got to fight you for it, or I've got to freak out that I don't have it, or, oh my God, I got to come up with a way to have more stuff. Again, it's these fallacies really came to us from society, from programming, from marketing, really from companies for the most part. These things have come to us. So it isn't helpful how uh, that happens, but when we can take control and ownership and realize, ah, that's not true, 
then all of a sudden we start to have this level of freedom that you may have never felt before. The whole concept of some people are better than other people. No, no, absolutely not. This is one of the giantest fallacies ever, ever, ever. In fact, some of the highest masters that have ever come to teach us anything have said things along the lines of, I am no different than you. We deify anybody that's capable of doing anything better than ourselves. We look at them and go, oh my God, put you up a pedestal. You're amazing. Oh, I will pray to you. And that is not what should happen ever. Everybody's equal. We can all become what we are, what others are. Maybe they've practiced a while. He's really good at something because he's done it 10 years. I've done it one year. He's better. Okay, but you can do that. That's not outside the realm of doable. Separating ourselves from some sort of eventuality, from some sort of outcome. If, you can, if you're separating yourselves from an outcome right off the bat because you don't think you can do it because they're special, well, again, you've a fallacy, and now you're limiting yourself in such an extreme sense you'll never accomplish that. You can do that. You can do whatever you want. So don't let that belief come into play. Again, these are beliefs that totally limit our lives. And finally, the fifth one. It is okay for people to kill each other to resolve the differences created by all the other fallacies. Meaning, if any of the other fallacies are true, like you believe in the wrong God, or you believe in uh, scarcity, or you believe in some sort of this is going to happen, like if, if I don't kill in the name of my creator. We've somehow created this fallacy that that's okay. That that's all right, that we kill one another. No, it's not. It's not okay. Definitely not okay. Killing other people, unless they are trying to kill you specifically, and I don't mean in, in principle, in ideology, they're trying to kill my faith. I, so that's not you. They're not in front of you with a weapon. And unless they are, that's, that's not okay. Right? We need to learn to get along with the fact that other people have different opinions. That's okay. We all have our own sets of fallacies. We have, uh, all have our own little hang-ups. We all have our own thoughts and beliefs. What I recommend and what I prefer is stop believing what everyone else tells you when it comes to the fallacies. Granted, here I am telling you not to believe other people. You know, <laughs> well, that's pot calling the kettle black now, isn't it? But again, trying not to listen to other people limit your reality and start to understand that we are, it's an abundant universe. You can have what you would like to have. It's out there for all of us to enjoy. If we can let go of these fallacies, if we can let go of these beliefs that hold us back, you will find, like I said, a freedom in your life, a freedom of now I'm not as scared to die so I can finally live because I know I'm okay. I know we go to the same place. I know this. Why? Because I, don't, I, know, I know these fallacies are crap. I've accepted that. I've learned it. I've got my own relationship with Source, with Creator, with Mother Earth with some of the most wonderful, amazing energies that are out and around us. I've created relationships. I've established them myself. I understand it from my perspective. I don't care what someone else tells me. I can go, well, that's not what I experience. Well, that's what you should experience. I don't know. That's what you're saying. But my experience is this. That's my experience. That's my reality. Can't take that from me. You can't. You can try to talk me into Believing it's something else. Again, now you're just trying to put beliefs in my head. And it's like, nah, that's, man, that's your hangups. That's your life. You don't believe in law of attraction. You want to say it's fake and phony. You don't believe that God's going to strike you down right now for saying that. No, God's stoked right now that I'm trying to help get some of this crap off his rep. He's got bad reps. Like, what? No, no, I don't need anything. I got this. I am everything. Why would I need anything? That's crazy. Let's get rid of that one right off the bat. Let's get that off the board. It's all the same stuff. Separate from each other? I hear it all the time. Absolutely not. We are 100% connected 100% of the time. And we're stoked that we are. Consciously, different thing. A lot of us got our own little hangups and deals and blah, blah, blahs. Our souls? No. Our souls are tight. Love each other deeply, completely. A lot of us come to life together because we want to do this together and we have so much fun doing it together and we'll just randomly bump into these people throughout life and we'll feel this cool connection. Gee, I wonder why. It's almost like you've known them before, huh? Hmm, I wonder how that happens. Nah, I can't. It's impossible. We're separate. Right. See, you start to have experiences in life that prove things aren't necessarily what we've been told. 
Hopefully this helps. I think it does, in my opinion. Going out with a kind of interesting song by Demi Lovato. It's called Confidence, right here on Dan Radio Style. Time to get the chains out. 